The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. You can earn continuing education credits through ACI's online CEU program. Visit www.concrete.org to register. ACI conventions provide an opportunity for networking and for keeping up to date with the latest in concrete technology and practices. And our next speaker is Yu Chen O oh from uh, Taiwan Tech uh, in Taipei, Taiwan. And he's an associate professor at uh, Taiwan Tech. And he will be talking about shear behavior of uh, uh, reinforced concrete column with both uh, high strength concrete and high strength steel. Thank you. Thank you, Hamid. Uh, I'm glad that uh, today I have this opportunity to be here to discuss with you about our recent research on the shear behavior, shear behavior of reinforced concrete column with high strength steel and concrete under low actual load. The actual load ratio that we examined in this research uh, were 10% and 20% actual load. The reason that I call them low actual load is because we are going to investigate 30% uh, and 40% actual load in the near future. Well, I think many uh, speakers already talked about the reason why we want to use the high-strength steel and concrete, because we want to uh, uh, push the uh, use of uh, high-rise reinforced concrete buildings. Uh, we want to push more people to live uh, higher so that we have more land for the green, uh, for the park, for the green land, and for the park, so we have a better living environment. But when we pushed the building to be higher, we found that the structural member, especially in the column in the low story, become uh, very large, un unacceptable. So we want to increase the strength of the material in order to reduce the structural dimension. In this research, we investigate the columns. We want to reduce the dimension of the column by using the high strength concrete and steel. But when we uh, tried to uh, design this kind of column, we found that the ACI 318 code does not allow us to use the benefit of the high strength steel and concrete, the upper limit of the steel in the ACI code. For shear design, uh, is uh, only uh, 420 megapascal. And for the concrete, for the shear design, it's only 70 megapascal. So it's necessary that we carry out research on the shear behavior of the column to see if we want to increase or whether or not we can increase that limit on the material strength. Uh, in Taiwan, uh, the, uh, the, high, the highest concrete compressive strength that is uh, uh, com commercially available can be uh, uh, produced uh, with a very stable quality is 100 megapascal. That's why we investigate 100 megapascal com com concrete compressive strength in this research. And recently, we have uh, two kinds of uh, high-strength steel uh, developer in Taiwan. Uh, for the longitudinal reinforcement, we have the new steel with the yield strength of 685 megapascal. For the transverse reinforcement, we have a new steel with a yield strength of 785 megapascal. So in this research, we use these two new high-strength steel. And uh, uh, we launched a very uh, large uh, research project to look at this uh, uh, the use of high strength steel in the structural members and this, this research look at the shear behavior of uh, high strength columns. We tested eight large scale column specimens. Uh, as you can see, this is the uh, table of the design parameter for the eight columns. Uh, we uh, have the two different actual load, 10% and 20%, and we have two different kinds of uh, vertical spacing of transverse reinforcement, uh, including 450 millimeter and 260 millimeter. We have two different kinds of uh, specified concrete compressive strength, 70 megapascal and 100 megapascal. But unfortunately, uh, 
the concrete compressive strength at the test day uh, did not differ uh, so much as we expect when we specify the concrete compressive strength. They are too close. This slide shows you the uh, reinforcing detail of the column that we tested, and this shows you the fabrication of the specimen, and this is the test setup. We apply uh, constant low and double curvature uh, to simulate the, uh, uh, the, the, the boundary condition uh, of a, a column in a, a building. And this is the uh, second loading that we apply. This shows you the test result for the four columns under 10% actual load. Uh, you see this is the column condition at the peak applied shear, and this is the end of the testing. The reason why this one has a uh, much less amount of damage is just because we terminated the testing earlier than the other columns. And this slide shows you the specimen test result for 20% actual load. If you compare these two slides, then you will be able to see the differences uh, when we increase the actual load. The, the behavior become more brittle. Okay? The drop of the uh, shear strength uh, become more rapidly, and we also found that uh, the shear crack angle reduce when you increase the actual load. Uh, from the test result, we are able to uh, measure the shear strength, but this is the total shear strength. And when we design uh, the shear strength of column using the ACI code, uh, we know that there are two parts of the shear strength. One is the shear strength from the reinforcement. The other one is the shear strength from the concrete. And we, we don't just look at the uh, total shear strength. We want to decompose the shear strength from the test result into two parts. One is from concrete, the other one is from reinforcement. The way we do that is, uh, we did this is, first of all, we estimate the shear strength contribution from the reinforcement using this equation, but we have to estimate the real stress in the transverse reinforcement. And I will show you how we did this later. And also, from the test result, we are able to observe the cracking angle. So we get the real cracking angle to be plugged into this equation to calculate the shear strength contribution for the reinforcement from the test result. After we get that, then we plug, in the, plug the shear strength from reinforcement into this equation. We will be able to, because we know the total shear strength, so we can calculate the shear strength contribution from concrete. And this, is, this slide shows you how we measure, how we observe the uh, shear cracking angle from uh, the eight specimens. And we found that uh, the shear crack angle range uh, from, is about 25 degrees uh, for 10% actual load, and it reduced to about 20 degrees for 20% actual load. And this slide shows you a very interesting observation that we got from the strain gauge readings. From the strain gauge readings, we found that uh, the maximum strain uh, in the transverse reinforcement at the crack is uh, positively correlated, uh, correlated with the uh, drift. So we found that uh, after the cracking, after the shear cracking, the higher the drift ratio, uh, we, we get a, a higher stress in the transverse reinforcement at the crack. And we found that uh, in order to get the yielding uh, of the uh, uh, transverse reinforcement, we needed a drift ratio of approximately 1%. So before 1%, if the column fails, you don't get the yielding of the transverse reinforcement. And this table shows you the drift of each column at the peak applied shear. So they are all smaller than 1%. Uh, to ratio. This means that the yielding of transverse reinforcement. Uh, uh, sorry. This means that the, at the peak applied shear, uh, the transverse reinforcement is not yielding. So this plot shows you uh, uh, the uh, relationship between the total applied shear, shear strength, total shear strength, and the shear strength from the concrete, shear strength from the reinforcement versus the drift. So you can observe that the uh, peak of the uh, concrete shear strength was reached before the yielding of the transverse reinforcement. And this is different than uh, what we know from a typical test book. And from a typical test book, uh, you, would, uh, you would know that the, what the assumption is, 
when you have a yielding of transversal enforcement, uh, then after that you get the uh, shear strength, the peak shear strength from the concrete. But from our test result, we found that the uh, peak concrete shear strength was reached before the yielding of the transversal enforcement. This slide also shows you the effect of the actual load. Uh, we see that the, the actual load will increase the VC, uh, the concrete shear strength, but will cause a more rapid drop of the uh, concrete shear strength after the peak. Uh, the increase of the actual load does not change the uh, uh, drift at the peak applied shear. And also does not change too much, oh, but because the actual load will reduce the uh, cracking angle, so the shear strength contribution from the steel reinforcement will be increased. This slide shows you the effect of the FC prime uh, because we don't have uh, very much difference in the uh, FC prime, so it's uh, uh, not easy to see the difference. From uh, this test result, this one has a uh, FC prime uh, 80 MPA, which is the lowest one, compared to uh, uh, this one, which has the uh, highest the FC prime. Uh, it seems to me that uh, when we increase the FC prime and we decrease the drift at the uh, peak of the uh, concrete shear strength. So uh, this means that uh, uh, because the reduce of the drift, so the stress in the transverse reinforcement also reduce. So this may imply that when we uh, reduce the uh, concrete compressive strength, uh, you are going to reduce the stress in the transverse reinforcement when the concrete reaches the peak of the uh, shear strength. And a possible reason for this phenomenon can be seen from this figure. This is a photo taken from the failure service of one of the specimen, and you can see that the uh, a crack cut through the aggregate. Okay, when you get uh, the uh, strength of the concrete become higher, then you know, the strength of the mortar is maybe equal or even higher than the strength of the aggregate. So when you have a crack, the crack typically cut through the aggregate. This will reduce the aggregate interlock mechanism in the uh, concrete, concrete, concrete shear strength. So this uh, reduces the drift of the uh, you know, peak concrete shear strength. This slide shows you the effect of the spacing of the hoop, and we found that if you increase the amount of the hoop, uh, you are able to uh, still increase the uh, total shear strength, although the shear strength from the concrete already decreased. Okay, so this means that the increase of the amount of the transverse reinforcement will increase the stress in the transverse reinforcement. The, the highest uh, level of the stress in the transverse reinforcement that can be reached in this research was about 600 MPA. So uh, this table shows you uh, the uh, VC and VS and VN for all the specimens uh, from the test result. And we try to uh, compare the test result with the uh, ACI shear strength equation. Um, we know that the VC equation has simplified version and detailed version. So this is the uh, ACI shear strength calculation result, uh, assuming uh, the maximum FC prime 70 megapascal and maximum FY 420 megapascal and assume a critical cracking angle of 45 degree. Let me jump to the result. So if you use the ACI shear strength equation with all the material imitation in the code, and we found that uh, we are able to get a conservative result for VS evaluation, for VC evaluation, uh, simplified detail, and also, of course, for the uh, VN calculation. So the ACI code with the material limitation is very is conservative uh, for high strength concrete columns. And then we try to challenge the material limitation. We increase the concrete compressive strength to the actual uh, 
measuring the testing, and we increase also the yield strength of the shield reinforcement to the actual yield strength. And we did the comparison again, and we found that, uh, of course, the fee has become unconservative, right? Because I mentioned earlier that the stress in the transverse reinforcement did not yield the peak apply shear. However, we found that the fee C from the simplified uh, shear strength evaluation is still conservative, even with the 120 megapascal of uh, FC prime input into the shear strength equation. For the detailed uh, shear strength equation here, I, I think still some problem. I, I need to talk to my students, so uh, we don't have any conclusion about this one. So, so the conclusion, first one, uh, we found that the, uh, the peaks of the uh, total shear strength and the shear strength from concrete were reached before the yielding of transverse reinforcement. And if you add more transverse reinforcement, uh, the stress in the transverse reinforcement can be increased. The maximum stress measured, uh, I should say estimated, uh, from our specimen was uh, 600, around 600 MPa. If you put more transverse reinforcement, reducing the spacing from 260 millimeter to maybe 130, uh, possibly you can further increase this one, maybe up to yield, but without test data, I cannot make this conclusion. The second conclusion, uh, if you use the ACI 318 uh, shear strength equation with all the material limitation, 70 megapascal for the FC prime and 420 megapascal for the FY, you are able to get a conservative estimation of the shear strength of high strength columns. And uh, if you increase the uh, concrete compressive strength to the actual, uh, as high as 120 megapascal investigated in this research, you still can get a conservative result with the uh, ACI 318 simplified VZ equation. For the uh, uh, detail one, I still uh, need further study to make sure we get conservative or unconservative result. That's my presentation. Thank you very much.